You are listening to the Daily Homily for Magdala in the Holy Land. Jesus began to speak to the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders in parables. A man planted a vineyard, put a hedge around it, dug a wine press, and built a tower. Then he leased it to tenant farmers and left on a journey. At the proper time, he sent a servant to the tenants to obtain from them some of the produce of the vineyard. But they seized him, beat him, and sent him away empty-handed. Again he sent them another servant, and that one they beat over the head and treated shamefully. He sent yet another whom they killed. So too many others whom they beat, others they killed. He had one other to send, a beloved son. He sent him to them last of all, thinking they will respect my son. But those tenants said to one another, this is the heir. Come, let us kill him, and the inheritance will be ours. So they seized him and killed him and threw him out of the vineyard. What then will the owner of the vineyard do? He will come, put the tenants to death, and give the vineyard to others. Have you not read this scripture passage? The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. But the Lord, by the Lord, has this been done, and it is wonderful in our eyes. They were seeking to arrest him, but they feared the crowd, for they realized that he had addressed the parable to them. So they left him and went away. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Alberto was starting to read from the book of Uh, Maccabees, the second book of Maccabees, which is a story of these seven sons who were killed because of the king, the pagan king's attitude. And it's a suggested reading, but I followed the normal pattern of the readings each day when it's not obligatory in the liturgy to have the other reading. And I can understand why that reading of the Maccabees would be very appropriate because today's martyrdom is for these young men who became martyrs. And actually it's very dramatic because uh, St. Charles Luanga was burned to death in a fire. And before he was executed, he fixed the logs in the fire. And then he laid down to be burned to death. So it was voluntary, like the gospel said, that Jesus handed himself over They didn't have to arrest him by force. And there we're contemplating an extraordinary level of love. And that's not improvised. First of all, children are nice. They get a little piece of cake. They're encouraged. They'll be nice again because there's another piece of cake. (laughs) So they're motivated because of external blessings to do good. And we grow little by little. Life is a process of growth. And we discover that we do things for God and not just for cake or for an ice cream. I remember when I was a boy and my mother encouraged me to go to Mass on the first Saturdays. And she gave me six, uh, I don't know, two pence or six pence, six pence maybe, to have the big ice cream so I could have the six penny ice cream. And after the Mass, so, you know, it was nice to go to Mass Um, But I had the ice cream as well. It was an extra little devotional thing. I was probably toward the end of uh, grade school. Uh, It was three and a half miles bicycle ride to the church. And so we have these small motivations, but then you keep growing. And then you don't do the good things just because of the immediate rewards, even feeling good. You do the good things because this is to love God to do it for love of God. And actually we need to reach that kind of love because that's mature love. 
we should do good because of love of God, not because everybody says, oh, what a great person, or did they have a nice talk at my funeral? <laughs> what a great person that was. <laughs> they did so much good things. Oh, that's okay that they say those things because it's edifying for others to be motivated to do good things. But I can't do good things because they'll say nice things about me at a funeral. That would be, <laughs> be a total uh, sellout of my life. I need to do good because of love of God. And that's actually then expressed through the great commandments, which are the great attainments, the great growth to true human development and maturity. Sometimes people talk about the next level of evolution, you know, the bionic person, or I don't know how it's going to be, but the greatest level of development of the human being is, is the love of God, through the love of others, to love God with all my heart and all my soul and all my strength and all my mind and to love my neighbor as myself. And how do we grow there? And that's a challenge. Because it's so easy, we have a force of gravity inside of us, just like we get tired and we need to go to sleep. And we want to give up because it's very hard. Uh, people criticize, people uh, are mean, people uh, cheat, people let you down, uh, all kinds of stuff. But we do good because we want to grow in the love of God, and none of us is perfect. So we have to grow and learn, and learn by heart, the school of hard knocks. And all the martyrs are the same, they're normal people. All the saints are the same, they're normal people that grow. And the letter of St. Peter is very beautiful about this, and actually, this text of St. Peter, I come to this morning in the, in, the, in the sunrise scroll and chat, but there's a piece here, that a, a pastor, an evangelical pastor, I was sharing this with him today, because we had a conference call at seven o'clock. And I, he said, did you already do the, the morning prayer? And I said, I don't call it morning prayer, it's sunrise, stroll, and chat, you know. But he was aware of that, and sometimes he follows that. He's a very good friend of Magdala, he and his wife. And then I told him that, <clears throat> that this was the passage. And he immediately, like straight off the phone, looking at me on a face, FaceTime call, he goes into, oh, uh, this, this passage is so wonderful because it's the promise that God gives for this passage that the person will never stumble. When we stumble, it means we turn from God's love. And the person who follows these steps in St. Peter's letter will never stumble. It's very interesting. And it gave me rise to the thought, there's a famous order, I think it's either the Cistercians or the Cartusians, I think it's the Cartusians, and it says they were never reformed because they never deformed. And I was wondering if this text could be an explanation because they wouldn't stumble. So it says here in the text, Make every effort to supplement your faith with virtue. Don't just believe. Go and do it. We're here not to be idle. We're here to be busy doing God's work. And complement or supplement your virtue with knowledge. Don't give up learning more about your faith, about the mystery of Christ. And complement your, supplement your knowledge with self-control. Imagine this martyr. Self-control. The dominion he had over himself to fix the logs for his own burning, for his martyrdom. But that happened earlier through many deeds because this king was incredibly mean in Uganda. And we know what happened more recently. We know Father Adam, his family, what they suffered under a king in Uganda. We don't need to name names of those people, but it was horrible. And so this was there in this time, and these kids, the pages in the kingdom, the king wanted to use those pages in a very awful, disgraceful way, and they were strong. And Charles Nwanga had taken care of these pages to protect them. And this whole story is a bit more complicated to, to relate it all now, it's amazing. But he, to supplement your self-control with endurance, not just to have a couple of days where you're self-control, Kind of, I did it with endurance, always. Endurance with devotion, with love for God, not just plain endurance. Devotion with mutual affection, because I could do a lot of endurance, but I might have a hard heart towards others. I might exclude others, I might be judgmental. Endurance with devotion, devotion with mutual affection, mutual affection with love, the total gift of love, total self giving. And this is what Jesus complains about in those who were given the responsibility for the vineyard that they became legalistic, they didn't love, they didn't give the fruits to God that he expected from the vineyard. 
What does God expect from our vineyard? That we love God with all our heart and all our soul and love our neighbor as ourselves. And anything less is sour grapes. And this is Isaiah chapter 5, the parable of the vine. Amazing parable. We have to give more than sour grapes to God from our heart. God wants us to give the fullness of love for the wine of the heavenly banquet. Thank you for joining us today. If you want to learn more about Magdala, follow us on YouTube and on Facebook.